I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Amen. Nor his seed begging bread. What a great God we have. A great Savior. I can hardly wait to hear him preach. And so I say the Sabbath morning, even so, come, Lord Jesus. There are 33,000 different denominations in the world today. Worldwide. We have one Bible, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, 33,000 different denominations. Where did they all come from? We have one Bible. It doesn't change 33,000 different, 3,300 different denominations. God has one remnant. And it's very clear in the Bible. I was raised a Roman Catholic. I was in the monastery. Studying to be a priest. I'm so glad I'm not a priest. I'm a, I'm a preacher in the Adventist faith. God called me out of darkness to his wonderful light. And thank him for keeping me preaching his message. And this is what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the text that changed my life. How many of you brought your Bibles with you this morning? Please take that Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 12. We are living in Revelation chapter 12 today. Especially in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And I want you to read that text with me, all of you who have a Bible. Revelation 12, verse 17. And what does it say? And the dragon, read it with me, and the dragon was angry with the woman. Which keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ and testimony of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Notice the two identified marks. They keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, and what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Turn to chapter 19, verse 10, please. 19, verse 10. You don't need my word. I just read it to you out of the Bible here because I read this when I was a teenager. Converted to the Seventh Day Adventist faith of Jesus. And Jesus showed me these texts, and guess what? They have not changed. They're still there. And they'll be there until Jesus comes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here's what it says. Verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. 
And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am your fellow servant and your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. This was the angel talking to John here. What does he say next? Worship who? God. Worship God. That's why we're here today. I should not worship a priest or a preacher or anybody else except Jesus. And then he explains the testimony of Jesus. And then it says, for the testimony, testimony of Jesus is what? Spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy. So I took these two verses and went around checking on different churches. Those that kept the commandments of God, all ten of them, I realized I was not keeping the fourth commandment of Jesus. And I wanted to find a church that kept the commandments of God, including the Sabbath. But I didn't know where to go. But God knew. He knew where I should go. Isn't that wonderful? God sees everybody who is searching. Even if you are the only one. In the sight of God, as though you were the only one. And you read in Steps to Christ, the relationship between God and each soul is as full and distinct. As though there were not another soul for whom he gave his beloved son. That's how God feels about you. God is very selective. And he selected you. As though you were the only one. Don't you like to worship a God like that? And so I went to my priest. And I told them, why are we keeping Sunday when the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath? And he says, um, that's not for you to ask. I said, what do you mean? You are my priest. Please tell me what happened here. He says, uh, I don't know what to the church changed that day. And he showed me a book like this. And on page 50, here's what it says. What is the third commandment? The third commandment is, remember thou keep holy the Sabbath day. And I was reading in my Bible, I says, I says, that's not the third commandment. That the fourth commandment says that. He says, uh, we have left out the second commandment. And then I was just a young, innocent teenager, and I said, why did you do that? And he started getting mad at me. I was innocent. I was not trying to give him a hard time. I just wanted to know. 
Yani je pada blo blo lor je ada tinya hui stiku lor je pada kuma nomi ba. And he looked at my father who was also there listening. My father was there to help him to, to get him to change my mind. And answer my questions. And he looked at my father, he says, there's no hope for your son. I'm glad he's not God. My hope is in Jesus. In his word. That was when I was a teenager. I'm not a teenager anymore. I'm 84 now. God's word has not changed. It's the same today as when I was a teenager. I'm so grateful to God and to Jesus. I have two sons who are also preachers. Thank you, Jesus. He's been so good to me. Is he good to you? You must have the same God. Same Jesus. So I want to talk to you about that. We are living in Revelation 12, verse 17. That's where we are now in, in point of history and prophecy. So I just want to talk to you for a few minutes on, on, on this issue of the fourth commandment. So there are 33,000 different denominations, different church uh, denominations. And you no, go online and you'll find that. I was amazed. I didn't realize there were that many. I knew there were quite a few. When I graduated from seminary, it was not, it was not that many. And now there are more and more different denominations. We have one Bible and, and ten commandments the Lord wrote with his own finger. There are 31,022 verses in the Bible. And he only wrote 15 with his finger. Don't you think we should learn those 15 verses? With his own finger. And uh, this morning, I, I'd like to just focus on where we are. There, there are really four stages in the great controversy between Christ and Satan. In chapter 12 of Revelation, it says, uh, there was war in heaven. And uh, that war was between who? Christ and two-thirds of the angels were with him. One third of those angels rebelled against Jesus. And it says here in Revelation chapter 13, there was war in heaven. I'm sorry. Yeah. There was war in chapter 12. There was war in heaven. And um, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. Did you know the first war started in heaven? Of all places, war in heaven. I'm not surprised there is war on earth. If Satan can start war in heaven, he can start war here, right? How many of you have heard about the war and the killing 
Kena aku bagi ya. Tak ada daya orang bawa mati lah kan. Wah, mengapa aku bawa? In the country of Iraq. Lalu kau ini kau Iran ni. How many of you have read or heard about that? Mengapa aku bawa kau lepas kau ini? I have a cousin there. Lain dia tak kau punya kan? Wena. I called them the other day. Lain dia kau cuci awal dia. His dad and my mom are brothers and sisters. Awe orang mau pada dah buat pun lah. And I picked up the phone. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to reach him. Dah ya. Put off your call, no, any law. So I said, "Well, what does it hurt? I'm going to try it." That's the way you guess. And guess what? His wife picked up the phone. No, any kind of a money put off call. I said, "This is your cousin." Oh, what do you mean the call? He said, "This is Ben." I said, "Yes, this is Ben calling." Well, Ben, I mean Ben. You're calling from America? I said, "Yes." No, go to America. What's wrong with that? Man, you lie. Come, come, my lad. That doesn't change our love for you. Doesn't stop our prayers for you. She said, "Wait a minute, I want to call your cousin on the phone." And I heard his voice for the first time in ages. And he said something. I hope he hasn't gotten trouble for that. He said, "We have just escaped from being killed. We are now, we are now living in Kirkuk. You heard about Kirkuk? That's where the Christians are running for life." He said, "We live, we live in a small room here. All eight of, seven of us." We live in a small room here. All eight of, seven of us. Please pray for us. I said, Lord, forgive me for ever complaining. We are so blessed here in America. When I heard the rest of the story, I start weeping. I couldn't stop, choked up. What other Christians are going through to save their lives, running, running, running. I hope we'll never ever complain. Yes, There was war in heaven. There is war right now. The first war was between dragon and his angels and Christ and his angels. No, two thirds of the angels fighting one third that followed Satan, that old Lucifer called the devil. Aren't you glad Christ? Aren't you glad Christ won that battle? He was kicked out of heaven. Where did he come to? Right here. You see, he's trying to get a foothold in the universe. But people like you, we're going to make sure that he doesn't get a foothold here. In your family, in your home, in your church, don't let him get a foothold here. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeking to devour. But praise be to God, thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other victory outside Jesus. That was phase one. He was kicked out of heaven. Phase two, there was war with the woman. He wanted to destroy the woman. Who's the woman? That's the church, isn't it? Jesus loves his church. Satan hates his church. That's why he wants to make sure that you don't come to church. And, and Jesus and two-thirds of the angels wants you to be here every Sabbath. 
Every Sabbath, Jesus went to church. If Jesus, if Jesus went to church on Sabbath, what do you think we should do? It was his habit, his habit, every Sabbath, he came to church. And so the, the war shifted to earth and, and Satan tried to destroy the woman, the church. In the Bible prophecy, women stand for the church. You know, I, I want to say this. Uh, I haven't preached to a translator for quite a while. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just getting acquainted with it again. Okay. So uh, I didn't realize I was going to have a translator until this morning. But I'm so glad he is here. Beautiful. In, in Philippines, I had seven, uh, what was it, five translators. <laughs> so by the time I was through the translators, I forgot my sermon. <laughs> I feel I'm doing that this morning. <laughs> okay. Um, he tried to destroy the church. Did he succeed? No. What happened during dark ages? He tried to destroy the church. Fifty million Christians who remained true to the word of God were destroyed by the enemy. Persecution has always been the seed of the church. We don't do very well in good times. And the church began to grow more and more. He couldn't destroy the church. And then today he's trying to destroy the remnant. So we're living in the fourth phase of the great controversy. He tried to destroy the the the, the church. He tried to destroy Jesus as soon as he was born. But Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for us. He took the form of a servant. And went to the portals of the of the grave. He said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to raise it up again. How many of you have that power? Uh, not one hand is going up. People have power to lay down their life. They don't have power to raise it up. Up from the grave he arose. Now he's in the presence of God for us. Heaven is a specific place. A specific throne there. And Jesus is interceding for you day and night. You have nothing to fear. We can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us. Even when you stop praying, he is praying for you. Someone, someone who's always praying for you. And we're here. Not because of our prayers, but because of his prayers. 
So that is the third. He tried to destroy the child. He tried to destroy the woman. But, but the, they both are here. Now we've come to Revelation 12, 17. He's trying to destroy the remnant. Let me, let me keep reminding you. You are in verse 17 today. There is no more after this. In the days of these kings, God will set up his kingdom. Which shall never be destroyed. And it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. It shall stand forever. So since we are in Revelation 12 verse 17, let's better study this very well. What's going on? So look, look at your Bible right now. Look at verse 17. That's where you are. Do you see yourself there? Do you, do you see your church there? Okay. Let's read this verse 17 together. Are you ready? Please say it with me if you can read it. By the way, I hope you memorize this. This is where you are. This is who you are. This is where we are. Then the dragon was angry with the woman. Which keep the commandments of God, testimony, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is what I was showing to my priest. I say, let me ask you this. If you keep the commandments of God, which day of the week will you keep holy? So what does the commandments of God say about the day? I said, in this book, it says Sunday should keep holy. And in this book, it says what? So I said, you made your choice, I make my choice on the side of the Bible. I'm so glad I did. I like to talk about it all the time. Look how God has blessed me. I took my stand for Jesus and his commandments. My parents and my family wanted to disown me. I was embarrassment to my, my family and my church back then. What could I do now? Where do I go? Jesus said, I have a place for you. As certainly as as he has a plan for us, he has up in heaven, he has a plan for us here on planet Earth. Do you, do you believe that? Yeah. God has a place? My friend, if you don't, I want to talk to you. So I didn't have a place to go. I, I went to one of our schools. I heard someone is going to one of our schools here. And I became a preacher. And ultimately, I had the joy of baptizing my dad. Thank you, Jesus. Baptize my mother. Baptize my brother. In Denver South Church. I was a youth pastor there. And my dad fell asleep in Jesus in my arms. Same thing with my mother. I will see them again. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain will be all cut off to Christ in the air. 
And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what it's all about. That's why we come to church. To strengthen one another in these words. You know, um, many are on the verge of the kingdom waiting to be gathered in. They're all around us. And so my wife and I were impressed to start a church at Litchfield. We never had a church in Litchfield. So I called the, the uh, Lala, my wife called the Baptist preacher. And, and they said, uh, he said, yes, I know you folks. You used to be a, a pastor in Glendale Church. That's right. We said, look, we don't have a church. We like to have a communion at a church in Litchfield. We have nothing. Can we use your church on Sabbath? He said, of course. Little did he realize someday he would be observing Sabbath. Thank you, Jesus. This Baptist preacher. He and Michelle, his associate, attended my evangelistic meetings. And you know what happened to people when they hear the truth? Same thing happened to me. The word, the truth of God, the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharp. My wife and I sat behind him when we had another evangelist come. And, and they were shaking their head. They've been to one meeting already. And we know that all things work together for good. Amen? How many things? How many? That includes good and bad. They're all working together for good. Don't ever be disappointed. Even your disappointed appointments are working together for good. Nothing just happens to you. God will never allow anything to come to you without his green light. And it's work, working together for your good. We'll never be allowed to be tempted beyond what we're able to bear. Because we know God will not allow Satan to tempt us beyond one hair about what we can handle if we do it God's way. So he allows the dragon to walk about as a, trying to tempt us, try us, but it's all within the will of God, within the plan of God. So I told this preacher, I said, you know, uh, they not only keep the commandments of God, but they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, what, he said, what is the testimony of Jesus? He said, is there anywhere in the Bible where it defines what the testimony is? Guess what my answer was? What is the testimony of Jesus? Revelation 19, verse 10. I said, I don't want you, I don't want to give you my translation, my interpretation. I want you to turn your Bible to Revelation 19, verse 10. Okay, what does it say? Revelation 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. 
But he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. For the testimony of Jesus, what does it say, is what? Spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, we're told, is the lesser light to lead men and women to the greater light, the scripture. God blessed this dear lady, a young lady, and who was a sick person with the spirit of prophecy. How blessed we are to have the gift of prophecy. I was trained under her grandson. And I'll never forget asking him a question about his grandmother. Willie White. Now, and, and I'll always praise the Lord that he was my teacher. I pounded him with questions. He, he, said, he says, Ben, how many questions do you have? He took, he took me up to the uh, the office where the Spirit of Prophecy original books were. And I read some of her, her original writings. I was so blessed to have a teacher like that. And how to interpret the Spirit of Prophecy. She says, my writings are the lesser light to lead men and women to the greater light. So many people misuse the spirit of prophecy. If the devil can't win one way, he'll try another way. I'm so thankful. I try to read the Spirit of Prophecy every day. And they always lead me to the Scripture. And, and I read the Scripture every year from Genesis to Revelation for many years. I'm so, so richly blessed. And I shared that with my family through the years. I hope you all get to get the Bible who have the Spirit of Prophecy translation or commentary on that scripture. So how do you know the Spirit of Prophecy is correct? I want you to write these two scriptures down in your notes. Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 20. Arthur White gave me some of the scripture. Matthew 7, verse 20. Matthew 7, verse 20. Who would like to read that text for me? For all of us. Look at all these hands. Man, I'm so glad we have so many good readers out. <laughs> Look at all. I don't know which one to choose now. Okay? Matthew 7, verse 20. Who has that? All right. Thank you, dear. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. What does that mean? By their fruit ye shall know them. This is one of the tests of a true prophet. So it means, do they speak in harmony with the Bible or not? My writing, he says, are to lead men and women to the greater light, the Bible. 
And then you read in uh, James chapter 2 verse 10. So they, they have to be in harmony with the Bible. Whatever they say, if they have the true gift of prophecy, they have to be in harmony with the Bible. Amen? Amen. I know I know a lot of people today, different churches who have claim to have a prophet, but they don't lead you to the scripture. Amen. One time I was passing a church in a place called Holyoke, Colorado. Do you remember Holyoke? You don't remember that, okay. It was my first brand new district. I'd never passed through a district before. I was young. And we, found, we found a nice home there where our children were little so that they could have, uh, uh, they could have homeschooling. And right across from where we live, there was a Mormon family. They're just beautiful people, nice people. And so, as our children were playing together, one time he came to me and he said, uh, I want you to read the Book of Mormons. I said, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> I want to be a good neighborly here. And I had never read the Book of Mormon. All I know one thing. He flunks the test of the Bible. I had his books. So just to be kind to my neighbor, I said, okay, I'll, I will take it and read it. I just leave through it. <laughs> he said, uh, when he gave me the book, he said, you read this book and you will know that it's the truth and he's the true prophet. And so when I came back to him and gave him his book back, you know what he asked me? What do you think he asked me? Do you believe it? Do you believe what you read? Do you believe it's true? And I was silent for a while. I said, neighbor, I want you to know, we love you. And what I, have, what I have to say, you're not going to be very happy. That book does not agree with this book. He said, what do you mean? I said, he breaks the fourth commandment. And if he break one commandment, what does the Bible say? James 2.10, and I read that to him. Whosoever shall keep the whole law and break one, he's guilty of what? He said, which commandment? Very innocently. I said, the fourth. He's never read that before. So I read it to him. I said, now, the Bible says one thing and the Book of Mormon says another thing. And I said, I want you to know, I've met many beautiful Mormon people, good people. Living up to all the knowledge they had. And he looked at me, he said, he said, I never thought about that. I said, I have a feeling God brought us here for a reason. 
Every Sabbath they saw us go to church. And their children wanted to know why, why they couldn't go to church. On the I truly believe God has his people everywhere in every church. And God has a special message for them. It is found in Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. I saw another angel fly in the, where? In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting or the ancient gospel. To preach to them that dwell in the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship who? Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. And the second angel followed them, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, she makes all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And later on it says, Come out of her, my people. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and, and receive his mark where? The forehead on the hand, the same will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. And then I said, to him, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of who? Jesus. That's the same people in Revelation 12, verse 17. Same people. And what happens after that? John says, I look and behold a white cloud. And who, who is sitting upon the cloud? One sat upon like the Son of Man. Having on his head a golden crown in his hand a what? Sharp sickle. And the angel said to him, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the harvest is ready to reap. And he that sat upon the cloud thrust in his sickle, and what happened? The harvest is the end of what? Right now, my friend, those messages are being preached in every country, ten, nation, and people. By their fruits, ye shall know them. James 2.10. In other words, Isaiah 8, verse 20. Put, put it down, Isaiah 8, verse 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is what? No light in them. By their fruit, you shall know them. I'm so glad the truth will stand the most critical examination of the scripture. Aren't you glad God is looking after us? There's that teenager who was sent to this Adventist school by mistake. No, when My dad didn't know it was a Seventh-day Adventist school. Thank you, Jesus, for man's mistake. Thank you, Jesus. That was not a mistake with God. He never makes mistakes. Amen. Thank you.